What's up guys? I'm out here on a brisk day in Southern Oregon. I'm actually at a mill site uh, Myrtle Creek course, which is becoming my favorite kind of home course right off the freeway. But today I'm out here to discuss the Dismania mystery box. Uh, I don't think it's that much of a mystery right now what's inside of these mystery boxes, but I wanted to open these up, give you guys my thoughts on the discs that you can expect to get from these, and also show you how the disc flies. So we're gonna open it up already. I have seen this, so it's not gonna be in the order you get it. I'm gonna hold this last disc off because that's the one you get at the very bottom. But in my mystery box, I got a double stamped link, uh, max weight white, which I really like. I like white putters. And uh, the link is a very good throwing putter. Uh, I used to putt with it before I started getting back into the P2s, but this is a pretty stable, neutral flying disc that a lot of disc mania players really love to throw and a lot of them putt with it. So happy with that disc. This next one was exciting to me for a little bit of reasons. It's a active line magician. And if you're not familiar with the active line from Dismania, it is a uh, affordable line from Dismania. And the magicians are the discs that you get in their starter packs. As someone who works really closely with you play disc golf, we use Dismania starter packs for a lot of our uh, community connects and teaching events last year. And the magician in the starter packs are pretty stable. They're something you can really reef on. And even our pros like Thomas Gilbert and Luke Humphreys and Dustin Keegan and Ella, uh, they all thought it was pretty beefy too, and they can really get into it. So this is a pretty domey version um, of the magician. Uh, the flight numbers on it are 6402. It's in a glow plastic, it looks like, and it's got a nice little mini magician stamp, which is pretty sweet. Definitely hooked up some at the end. I didn't really throw it. I threw it like slide highs to the flat, I believe. And uh, it went straight and just started slowly drifting to the left. Um, I would say it felt like it had more fade than like an FD, but it was slower. So if you're looking for something like that, that's kind of my quick review. This one is pretty sweet. It's got the mystery box stamp on it. If, if I could throw black discs, I would probably throw black discs, but uh, just realistically, it's so much easier to lose them. Uh, but I really like how this looks. This might be a wall hanger for me or something that I hold on to for a little bit. 179 black MD3 and they're like S-line plastic. Next disc, blue. As you can see here, I got the new Disc Golf Pro Tour and Upper Park Rebel Bag. I was on the Pro Tour uh, the last two years filming for uh, like four to six events each year. And so I really like repping this and I really support Upper Park as well. So got the cool uh, blue Disc Golf Pro Tour branded bag and I got all blue discs. So I'm happy that I got a blue disc in my mystery box. This is the FD3. It's in there, sea line plastic, got a nice Dismania original stamp on it. This is probably gonna be something that finds my bag soon. Uh, right now I have this guy. So um, depending on how stable this one is compared to the metal flake one, I might have it in the bag sooner than later. So very happy with the FD3. Next disc is the Lux Vapor Enigma. This was a specialty release a couple years ago and it was pretty popular for a lot of players. I know that Dustin Keegan was using a Lux Vapor Enigma for his backhand rollers. Uh, I don't have that kind of arm, and so this is maybe more of a bomber disc for me, something I can throw in a little bit of hyzer, have it pop up, turn to the right, and then fade back. Woo, that's flippy. That's way flippier than I thought it'd be. Next one, I have a Day Glow Yellow 173 PD. I'm really trying to get into the PDs. I used to throw Thunderbirds all the time, uh, but since I throw 99% uh, Disc Mania, I am trying to find something that kind of replaces it. And the PD, depending on the run, the more current ones are pretty beefy. They're nice if I want to just have something go dead straight for like 300 feet and then hook up that last 20. So we'll see if this makes the bag. That's the PD power driver. You got to have some power to throw that. Next one, we got a Logic. This is a beadless shallow putter from Dismania. Not a lot of people know about the Logic. It's a good disc. I was throwing it in the beginning and it kind of replaced my, I was throwing a Pier before I really got into just throwing Dismania and it kind of replaced the Pier for me. It's a little less stable 
than a pier. But if you like a shallow beadless putter that goes pretty dead straight when you throw it flat or on a little bit of hyzer, it'll go pretty much dead straight without a lot of finish. I would definitely look at the Logic. I got a nice yellow one in my mystery box. Soft plastic, which feels really good when it's out here at like, I don't know, it's probably like 40, 45 degrees right now. It feels good in the hand. Ooh. Well, before I hit the trees, I mean, that popped up dead straight and it was just gonna finish right at the basket if it didn't hit the trees. The next disc, I believe is a new disc, unless they renamed a previous disc, but I'm pretty sure this is new. It's the Active Line Taylor. So again, the Active Line is that affordable plastic run from Dismania. And I don't think they renamed a disc and it feels like a different mold than they've had. It kind of has a uh, MD3 feel to it without the micro bead. Maybe something kind of feels maybe like a buzz in the, in the rim, but it's pretty flat and it's a 4401. So let me see, we got this is an MD3 comparison, and it looks pretty similar. A little more concave on the tailor, and it might be a smaller diameter mid. But that's the tailor. This is the MD. So the top of it kind of looks like an MD, and the bottom on the tailor is kind of concave. So I'm guessing it's going to be more beefy than the uh, MD. First time throwing this disc, based on the numbers and the feel, I think it's going to go pretty straight with some finish at the end. So I'm gonna throw it similar to that link, but a little higher. Not as stable as I thought. Uh, felt more like the logic in terms of how it wanted to fly. But you could, you could see, I mean, I threw it pretty flat and it just stayed dead straight. So that actually feels really good in the hand. And with it being an active line plastic, it being a little bit of a cheaper disc, that might be a hidden gem in the Dismania lineup if you're looking for a good mid-range. So that is most of the discs you'll find in your bag when you first open it up. And then at the very bottom, they have this nice hidden compartment. This is the first release of the DD-1 Stratosphere. I'm not sure if they're calling it the Stratosphere, but it, it's the DD-1 in their Horizon plastic, which looks like um, Orbit plastic or Halo plastic. It's that new kind of rim uh, change color plastic from this manufacturers you're seeing. This one's in hot pink and black, which is pretty sweet. I like the color combo. As someone who is trying to go with a single color or maybe two color bag, uh, just for aesthetics, since I don't play quite as much as I used to, this might be getting shipped off to my buddy who throws all pink. As someone who has quite a bit of D DD3s in the bag, as far as distance drivers, I got the C-Line and I got the cloud breaker. The main distance driver I throw from Dismania, this is a Uplay disc golf stamp one, but is the CD3. And they haven't come out, come out with the CD3 yet. This DD1, if we're going off of their number system, typically if it's a one, it's less stable than a three. And in the past, I've thrown the DD from Dismania and did some disc reviews on it a couple years ago. And the DD was the most overstable disc I've ever thrown and it was it didn't make sense to me in my head so i'm glad that they are coming out with a dd1 and from the the sneak peek that i saw of eagle throwing it it seems like it's going to be more of a controllable distance driver for someone with a lower arm speed oh hit the bottom of the basket on a skip um that was sweet uh that i feel like i threw pretty hard again Form might not be great at the moment, but for what I saw, it didn't want to turn and burn. It popped up a flat and just wanted to go straight. It didn't have a whole lot of finish. And I hit like 10 feet in front of the basket. Hopefully the camera caught it. And I skipped up and hit the bottom of the, the basket. Uh, so that was my cool ace with my first throw on it. You're the thrower? You're just making a video? Making a video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a little bit, but. Hey. But yeah. 